Hello and welcome back. In this video, you will learn how to set up auto archiving of shape on list records using Power Automate flows while keeping the author and created date stamp columns intact. So stay tuned and let's go to the demo after this short intro. For the scalability of the application built on SharePoint list, it is important to keep SharePoint list clean as should only host the records which are relevant to the business in the current period. Any old record should be moved to an archive list. Power Automate Flow makes the life easier. Any tech savvy business user can now implement an archiving strategy for SharePoint list and build Power Automate Flows to facilitate the list records archiving process by following the simple steps in this video. So let's dive in. I have a list called orders. In this list, I have few old records created, let's say in 2021. And I want to archive any record which are more than a year old. So in that case, all these three records need to go into an archive list. This is a small list, but imagine you have a list with thousands of records and you want to manage that list going forward and make it scalable. So you need to keep archiving the old data regularly. So first thing first, I need to create an archive list, which is a mirror of this list. To do that, I will just go to site content from the setting menu, click on site content and click on the new drop down and select list. And I will select a list from existing list option. I need to select orders list from the same site. So sales team site and orders list. So I can create a mirror list to archive the old data. I'll click on next. I will give this list a name. I will call it old orders and I will click on create. Now the old order list is created with the same columns type and number of columns. Next, I will navigate to the Power Automate flow so from the home menu. Click on the nine dots and click on Power Automate. Or you can navigate directly to make.powerautomate.com. And from the left menu, I'll click on create and I will create a schedule flow because you want to schedule this maybe every month or every week to clean up anything which is more than a year old. So I will give this flow a name. I will call it archive orders. I will run this flow, let's say monthly and starting from 1st of July, which is today. And this will repeat on the 1st of every month at 10 a.m. to archive any old records. So I will click on create. Okay, so the first action I will need is to get item from the orders list. So I will search for get item. So there is a SharePoint action get items. I will select that. I will select a site. The site is sales team and the list name is orders list. So I will select orders and then I will click on show all to look at the advanced parameter because we want to filter and only retrieve the data which is more than a year old. So for that, I will go to filter query and I will say created is less than and then in the single code inside the single code, I will write a regular expression in the regular expression. I will say add days UTC now. So the time now add days minus 365. So add minus 365 days mean anything older than 365 days return those values and I will click on add. Okay, so we have added the filter query in here. Now let's save and run this. I will close this copilot for now. If I click on the test, I will click manually run this flow, click test and run flow, click on done. So the flow ran successfully. It should output three records. If I go back to orders list, there are only three records which are more than a year old in terms of created date. So if I go back to Power Automate and I will click on this show raw output and we can see there's a record created in 2021 and then we got another one in 2021 here and then we got another one in 2021 so we got three records returned which means that our filter query is working fine it is returning only the record which are more than a year old so let's continue with the development of this flow i will click on edit next section we need is we need to create an item in the old order list based on all the item in this order list. So if I click on the plus sign, click add an action, I will search for create item action. So create item action of SharePoint. I will select that. I will select the site. We have created old order list on the same site. So I will select sales team site and the list name this time is old order list. I will click on show all the parameters. So the title of this is going to be get item 
title as soon as we do that because there are more than one item it will automatically put this create item action within a for each loop so it can run multiple times and create multiple items that is fine so in terms of quantity we can select the quantity from the get item and in terms of unit price we can also select from get items date ordered we can also select from get items action and the status value instead of selecting a status i can click on enter custom value and then i will click on getting the value from the previous action get item so i will get status value all right so let's run this flow if i click on save and i will click on test i will click on manually run the flow click on test run flow click on done okay so flow ran successfully because there are only three item it was quick so if i go back to and look at the old orders list open a new tab we can see all those three orders got created in the old order list which were older than a year now the only problem we see here is that the created created by modified and modified by these are staying as the current person and the current time so the whoever running that flow it is putting that person name as created by and modified by and then the current timestamp it is putting for those records now what if we want to retain the metadata for those lists in terms of who created it and who last modified it into the archive list as well so we can maintain that data for auditing purposes to do that we need to further enhance the flow so if i go back to the power automate i will click on edit the flow inside this for each i will click on plus sign add an action and we need a data operation compose action and in the input we need something like this so for created we will get the created by the item created by claim value and for the modified we will also get the modified by claim value so let me just do that once more time so i will select this and then when we have get the item so from the get item if i click on so i will select this action and then on the get item if i click on see more we need to get modified by claim value so that's the value here similarly you will take the created by or author claim value and for the modified and the created date we need to format those dates so if i click on one of them i can show you format date time item modified this is the item from that get items and then the format of my site is in uk date format so that's why we have day month and year and then same thing for created so this will be using the created column from the get items and then it will have the same date format if your date format is not correct when you try to patch it it will throw an error so this is the format of your compose action you will have a field name and the field value okay so the next thing after the compose we need to send an http request to sharepoint to update these values so if i click on plus sign add an action i will say send an http request to sharepoint action i will select a site from the drop down sales team and the method is going to be the post this time instead of get so i will select post and in the uri section i will enter the api web list get by title old orders item so we'll get by title the list old orders so this is where we will update the metadata values to the original author and the timestamp item and then the id now this id as you can see is a create item id so it is id of that item which we have just created in that old order list two steps back and validate update item list function we need to run in the headers if i click on show all i have to type the header here which is content type value is going to be this application json or data verbs and then i will do accept and then the same value i will type it here in the body we need to get an output of this compose action so what we're saying is that form value for it to update the properties pass that output from that compose action okay so that's done for the flow let's test one more time and at the end once everything runs smoothly what we can do is we can have a delete action to delete those items which are archived now i will click on save so the flow is saved successfully let me go back to the old orders and let's delete these records i will click on delete okay now if i go back to the power automate and click on test click on manually click test click run flow done okay so the flow ran successfully if i go back to 
old orders and refresh this list I can see three orders created again but this time you can see the created date stamp and modified date stamp are the one which were in the original record and also created by and modified by are coming from the original record if you go back to order list this was the original records you can see created date and modified dates are in 21 and 2022 and once is archived it is keeping that date timestamp because these records were all created by me so you won't see any difference but let me copy everything from this list i will remove that filter query so we can copy everything across because there is one record which is created by adam the adam name should come on the archive even the flow is running using my credentials so if i go back to the power automate flow if i click on edit i will go back to get items created by so instead of 365 i will just say zero which means return me everything so this is going to archive everything in the main list so just for testing the modified and created by person field i will just copy everything so i will remove this one for now so from the old record list i will remove everything now let's go back to the flow and save the flow and retest it if i click on the test click manually test run flow done now there were six record in the order list i'm expecting all these six record to be created in the old order list with the created and modified dates and the created by and modified by name stay intact so if i go back to orders old orders list if i refresh the page i can see all those orders are created here now and you can see created dates created by names modified dates and modified by name are staying intact so we have proved that this is working fine so let me go ahead and remove this one more time from the old orders list now we'll make a final change to the flow and we will retest it one more time and that will be our flow to go live if i click on edit one thing I will do is I will change this created is less than minus 365 so it only return us anything older than a year. So if it's one month old you will just change it to minus 30. If it's six months then you change it to minus 180. Click update and one more thing we need to add after this for each loop to delete item. So we are getting item we're going through each item and creating a copy in the archive list and then after that we're going to delete all those items so if i outside this loop if i click on the plus sign add an action and if i say delete item sharepoint action and i will select site address which is sales team and list name is going to be orders because we are already moving those items to archive list so that's why we are deleting them and id i will select dynamically and this will be the get items id so if I select that, you will see it is again adding a for each loop because there are more than one item it's expecting to retrieve here into get item. So it will then delete all the items after it moves the item into the archived list. So now our flow is ready. If I click on save now, so let's do a recap of this flow. So we are getting all the items which are more than a year old and then we're going through each one of the item. We're creating a record in an archive list and then we are updating the modified created dates and also the author and modified by person to the same it was in the original list. And then outside that loop, we are having another loop where we are going through each one of the original item from the get item and then deleting those items. So we don't have any items in the main list anymore because they are moved into archive list and our main SharePoint list stays healthy and lightweight. I will click on save. Okay, let's give it a final test. So if I click on it, I will click on manually run the flow, test and then run the flow. Before we run it, let's look at the scenario. It will copy these three records which are more than a year old into the archive list and then it will remove these three records from the main list. So main list will only have these three records and then archive list will have the first three records. So I will go back to the flow and click on run flow, click on done. All right, so let's go back to the list. So main list, if I refresh it, you can see there are only three records remaining which are created in this year. And if I go back to the old orders list, if I refresh this list, you can see all those old orders are now moved to this archive list, but it is keeping the created, modified, created by and modified by 
person and date stamps intact. And now if I go to the recycle bin on that side, I can see those deleted item are present here. You can either delete it from here or you, if you've done anything wrong, you can restore them back or you just leave them. So after a set period, which is first stage, second stage cycle bin, and then it will be removed forever. Hopefully you have learned now how easily you can set up an auto archiving for SharePoint list using Power Automate Flow. And the most important thing is that you are keeping the date timestamp when this item was originally created and the created by person field intact. Thank you for watching this video. Consider subscribing if you're new to the channel by pressing the red subscribe button below this video and click the notification bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos as I upload new videos every week. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. If you have any question regarding this topic or any other query related to Microsoft 365, add in the comment section below. I review the comments on a daily basis. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.